these people are drinking beer. It's quite sweet. That's actually really good. Made from sewage. What? Oh my god. Okay. It's called New Brew from Singapore, and it's actually funded by the government there. This is new. How is that making me feel right now? I don't know. It's all about solving the country's water scarcity problem, something they've been incredibly successful at. So, as a hotter climate makes water shortages more common and severe in the world, what can we learn from a beer made from... Recycled sewage water. Okay. You wouldn't know it, but Singapore is actually one of the most water-stressed countries in the world. And they've had to come up with some innovative solutions for this. I think the key uh, strategy over the years to build up our water resilience is to diversify our water resources. It boils down to four approaches. Collecting rainwater, importing clean water from Malaysia, refining seawater using something called desalination, and recycling water from sewage. Wastewater recycling isn't new. The technology's been around for decades. Here's a clip of Bill Gates drinking poop water on TV. Tasted really good. Yeah, no, that's the, well, that was good poop. Astronauts also use a similar system in space. We even recycle our urine. It's done through a process of filtering out debris and bacteria, followed by viruses, and finally, mixing the water with hydrogen peroxide and processing it in ultraviolet light. The result is high-grade water that's safe for drinking. More places facing water shortages are considering recycling as a solution. And Singapore is one of the few successful models. Since launching their recycled water program in 2002, the recycled sewage known as new water meets about 40% of Singapore's water needs. Most of it goes to industrial use, while a small amount ends up as tap water. Then there's projects like New Brew, which is about four years in the making. PUB, the agency that manages the country's water supplies, approached the Tan Brothers, who owned a local brewery, with the idea to create a beer that raised public awareness of water recycling. So why aren't we seeing this system replicated in more places? First, it's more expensive and energy intensive than alternatives like collecting rainwater or pumping groundwater. A big part of that energy use comes from the second stage of water recycling, reverse osmosis. The amount of energy might be two or three times as much as what it takes to pump groundwater out of the ground, but it's also about half as much as it takes to desalinate seawater. Reverse osmosis also produces waste byproduct that's high in salt, which is pumped back into the ocean. So one of the challenges is figuring out how to recycle water either without reverse osmosis or by finding a way to treat that reverse osmosis concentrate and make it suitable for putting back into the environment. Technological breakthroughs are making the process cheaper and easier, but it's still a challenge for less wealthy countries. There's also the mental hurdle. Most people are willing to use recycled water to, say, water their plants. But putting it into your body? That's a harder sell. Hmm. In the mid-1990s, Los Angeles started the Toilet to Tap project to try and turn wastewater into drinking water, but it faced skepticism from politicians and residents on whether it'd be safe. In the town of Toowoomba, Australia, rejected in 2006 a water recycling plan, even though it had been experiencing droughts. The first reaction, yes. Why, why would you want to drink that? Singapore's success with recycled water comes down to decades of trial and error and hundreds of millions of dollars in investments. But it's also because of a big push in clearing up recycled water's image. Either you bring people with you, or you cannot implement the project because you cannot force the resource on the people. That has meant taking visitors on tours of water treatment facilities, getting the endorsement of prime ministers and UN officials, and producing a whole TV series featuring a water droplet mascot called Water Wally, who fights a mud villain. And now, they have one of the greatest tools of persuasion in history, beer. If I like the taste of it, I would be willing to pay a bit more money because it feels like you're doing something good by drinking, rather than just damaging your liver. If you just like look at it and like think about how this water's been used, the butts that it's touched and things like that, and now you're drinking it, it's like, it's just part of the cycle. I think it's poetic, I think it's cool. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and check out more of our videos.